This is just a sheep field now. But just under 1400 years ago, we would find the 29 year old Oswald having a vision here. And he was raising a cross and he's praying to God for victory for his small war band on the eve of a major battle against the tyrannical king of the Britons, Cadwallon. It's a defining moment in Oswald's life, but this is by no means the start of Oswald's story. For that, we'll have to go further back in time a little bit and we'll have to go much further north. Back to the end of the sixth century and here to Bamburgh. After the Romans had gone, some pagan Germanic tribes invaded from mainland Europe from what we now know as Denmark. They were called Angles, Jutes and Saxons and they started to take over in the east and south of the country. The north of England here was mainly divided into two regions called Benicia and Deira and that makes up what eventually becomes known as Northumbria. That's basically everything north of the Humber to modern day Scotland and east of the Pennines. There were Britons in the west, Angles in the east, Saxons and some Jutes in the south and in the north were the Picts. It's difficult living in 21st century Britain to imagine things as they were then. The two main things that I have to get my head round anyway are that the English are different than the British in them days. The one way to look at it is that the peoples who became the English are basically invaders from Western Europe. They're from over there and they came over here from Denmark. They're not part of the homegrown population of Britons. I think that's amazing. So the second is that the church has vast political power. The Roman church has grown up inside the Roman Empire. And as the Emperor's power faded, the worldwide political power of the Pope has increased. So in the early 7th century, there was about two to four million people on our little island. And for them, life was mainly about getting by, not getting on. They were staying alive through cold winters. They were growing crops and having enough to eat. And they were basically trying to keep their families from dying. They were busy surviving. They were ploughing fields and sowing and milking and harvesting and fixing stuff. And they were working outside in the fields or down the woods. They weren't playing about on the beach. For Ireland's embrace of obesity as a lifestyle hasn't happened yet. And the concept of work being defined by how many likes or followers you get on social media isn't a fashion. And while lives aren't yet mired in the deception of the kind of modern progress that be breeds apathy, mental health problems and a me, me, me on my small island society. So this is really simple. There's a group of elite families plotting to be in charge. There's murder, betrayal, sibling rivalry, fearsome warriors and God's holy men. And there's funny men of God as well. There's kings and queens and princes and there's bishops and they're all playing a high stakes game of power. The same can be found today in the halls of 21st century Westminster and Holyrood the Senedd and Stormont. But there the holy men are mostly scoffed and the power grab is made by stabbing your enemies in the back with a tweet or a bombardment of hostile newspaper headlines instead of assembling private armies and stabbing them through the front with a sword. Speaking of which, 
To find out what God said to me in 1996 about the soon to arrive Blair government, about Ireland and about Islam, you'll need to watch episode two of my series, What is God saying to the UK at the start of the 21st century?